Go, do you want to kick us off? Serena, so, um, so first of all, how proud are you of the result, the performance, <coughs> and that you had to overcome a, a tricky first half an hour? Yeah, uh, of course, I'm very proud. I think, again, the team found a way. Yeah, we didn't start that well. Uh, they got a big chance in the first minute while we had a kickoff. And then we were struggling a little bit by the way they played defensively. Um, but during the first half, we did a little better and better, and the players in, on the pitch just found the solutions. Uh, but we played too sloppy, and we played them in their strengths because they were so strong in the counterattack. So they got a couple of chances. We needed the crossbar one time, and after that we scored a goal, and that helped a lot. You said you'd go do a little bit of celebrating. What does that look like in your world? Um, well, uh, I haven't... I, I haven't been in the... Well, I went in the dressing room, but I think they just had a little break. Uh, but they're singing, music is on, some dancing, and um, yeah, that's that's actually about it. We were just really happy we made the final. It's a little celebration, and then tomorrow we'll recover, and then uh, we'll go get prepared for the final. I know that you don't like to talk about individuals, but I've got to ask you about that finish for the third goal. It was absolutely <laughs> outrageous. Um, she nearly had another cracker, didn't she? How good was Russo coming on? How good was that finish? And what on earth did she have to do to start? Yeah, she um, yeah, she came on and had uh, impacted the game again uh, very well. Um, I think also in the game that we got more and more control. <coughs> so that helped a little bit too. But when you um, well Frank came through and then she had the, the cut back and then she, she hit it first on the goalkeeper. Uh, but you must have so much courage to do such an unpredictable and phenomenal thing like that, that you know, no one could ever react on it. So, yeah, I think it was phenomenal. It was really nice to watch. And, of course, it was the 3-0. So it was like the last final hit uh, that we knew, OK, now we just cons consolidate and uh, play, uh, finish this game, manage this game. What about the second part of the question, Serena? What has she got to do to start? Um, well, I think she does everything that she needs to do. And she plays really well. Uh, but before every game, we take so many things in consideration. And um, yes, she, 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 she could start. But I think with the starting team that has started all the time has done really well too. And I think the combination, what we continuously have had, works well too. So we'll just see um, how, it, how we go from here. And just finally from me, I know that you understand something of the expectations now because of the Netherlands five years ago. But are you prepared for just how bonkers this country's going to go in the next few days ahead of the final on <laughs> Sunday? I think I'm going in my own bunker. <laughs> 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 and just to uh, find... No, yes, we already noticed that a little bit, of course. And, yeah, we said before the tournament, and we still say that every time, that uh, we want to inspire the nation. I think that's what we're doing. Um, and we want to make a difference. So we, we hope that, yeah, that we got everyone's so enthusiastic and that at the end actually the whole country sh is proud proud of us and that more even more girls and boys will start playing football thanks gail we'll go to emma at the bbc please congratulations serena thanks simple question who do you want to play in the final <laughs> i don't care <laughs> do you not think playing playing germany at wembley England, Germany, that is kind of, you know, the ultimate game in English football. I think England, France is the ultimate game too. And English, England, Germany is the ultimate game. Um, really doesn't matter who, uh, who is against us. We, we're just going to get prepared anyway. And yeah, whoever is in front of us. And it would be obviously your, your third successive major tournament final as well as a manager. So how do you think that experience will be important for you and the players going into that obviously just being able to manage the situation and and obviously the pressures and perhaps just level out the excitement after after this game yeah i think uh, that's what we already did after the group stage because then you come in a knockout stage and you know when you don't win then you're out so actually then you play three finals so today was it and, and well you put quarter in front of it but actually it's a final and um, so we mani we've managed those expectations and managed how we want to approach it and having the focus all the time. So we're not going to do anything different from that. Only now it's the final and that's uh, it's going to be a full Wembley. So uh, that's uh, pretty amazing. See you at Wembley. Thanks, Emma. We'll go to Michael <coughs> at the Athletic. 
Hi, Serena. Uh, you mentioned that Sweden started very well. Did they do anything uh, that surprised you in terms of the way they set up? Um, no, they didn't do anything really different. Uh, but they, um, I think what they did really smart is that they just we couldn't pass back and forth in our in with our with our centre backs and um, and that that made it hard. So they didn't do anything. They just stayed with with two of our players. And then we needed some extra players to, to start up our possession game and get out of that press in the first stage. And we had trouble with that. So we were too loose, uh, not tight on the ball. And you know against Sweden, when you lose the ball at moments that you don't exp or you shouldn't lose it, um, then they're gone. Um, and that was dangerous. That gave a lot of danger. So we had to do that better. And in terms of the way England fought their way into the game and dominated, was there anything you changed or the players finding solutions or was it just the goal that changed the momentum of the game? Um, I think, first of all, the goal changed that uh, in the first half. But I think the second half, we started playing better. I think it was a combination of things. We started playing better. We were tighter on the ball. We made better decisions. And, um, and the spaces became bigger. So we had a little more time too. So they couldn't keep up with the tempo what they played or how they defended the first half, I think. Thanks, Michael. Goes to Pierre at the keep. Do you already know if you're going to watch the game tomorrow all together with the whole squad? Um, no, we, we always leave that to the players themselves. We watch, we have a screen on, you can watch on your, on your, on your room, of course, too, but we don't, force to, to, uh, we don't force players to watch the game. That's their thing because they know how we prepare it. So we will have a meeting and then... Um, and then tell what which opponent we have, uh, what what they do. Uh, but I know all the players are watching. Thanks, Pierre. We'll go to Tom at the Telegraph at the back, please. Thank you, Serena. Congratulations. I wondered if you could just uh, give us an insight into what sort of things you said at half time because they came out so quickly to get the second goal. What what was your message at the break? Well, that was basically uh, what I just said. So th they had their organization and we needed to get out of their first press uh, better uh, with some choices we needed to do in our shape. Uh, and we also need to be really tighter on the ball. Uh, we lost we lost passes um, that we shouldn't lose. And, and then we played them in their strengths. That's basically what we said. We were talking about organization, making better choices and being tighter on the ball. And, and just one more, so that's okay. Do you think the whole the whole sport will have taken notice of that result tonight? Pardon me. Do you think the whole sport will take notice of that result four nil against Sweden? The, ho the whole, sorry. The whole of the women's game in the world. Oh yes, I think so. I think this is a pretty. Uh, you, you said, are you ready to write history? I think this is a little history. That's what you asked yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. We'll go to Molly at the Times. Hi, Serena. Congratulations. Hi. Thanks. Um, and I know you've been very calm about everything and, and, you know, obviously looking forward to that final now. But if I take you back to when you joined, would you ever imagine you'd have gone through 19 games, you're still unbeaten, over 100 goals, and the manner of which England are winning these games as well? Has it even, has it even surprised you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, when you come in, you hope, you hope that things go well. Uh, and that you connect with the staff and with the people in the FA and with the, and, and then, of course, with the players and that it all works. Uh, and I think from the beginning there was a click and, and that's what you can tell. And that, that's hard work too because things, uh, yeah, as you know, I don't think things were granted and it's hard work to get connected with people. Uh, but you feel the energy and you feel people believe in the, how, how we want to work and how we want to play. And, of course, we ask also players um, how they feel, what they experience. And yes, uh, the results have been really, really good, and that's very nice. And again, I don't take for granted. Sometimes it's really tight, you know. We're here now, we're going to the final, but we know how tight the game against Spain was. And just that, yeah, it's sometimes it goes in the good way, sometimes in, in the wrong way, and still you, you then believe in what you're doing. So yeah, it's really nice, and I hope we can do even better uh, next Sunday. Thank you. Thanks. Oh. We just go in front of you, Molly. Uh, yeah, just in front. Sorry. Congratulations, Serena. You mentioned before about how often you've been able to name you've been, you've been able to name the same team all the time, and we saw that as well with the Netherlands in 2017. Is that? I mean, we had some substitutes. Yeah, you've made a couple of changes, yes. yeah, but not too. I mean, I think maybe three over the whole tournament. 
in the starting lineup. Is there some? Well, is that's it, pretty much when you have is, eleven on the pitch. Is there a way? Is there a way you've been able to? You're able to manage the squads that you are able to always have so so much choice, and we don't haven't necessarily seen the injuries and the absentees mm -hmm. that other teams are. Is there something different you do, or is it just is it just fortune that you've not been forced into making changes? You can always pick the team you want. Um, yeah, I th I think well, first of all, the team um, I think the team has done really well by accepting everyone's role. And what we're trying to do is just trying to help everyone in development. Now we're performing. Uh, but everyone who's on the pitch trains really well. So we're just driving each other uh, day in, day out to, to, get to become better. That's also why we're doing so well. If one, two or three players will not do give their best, that will harm the team. So I think our squad of 23, you can tell on the pitch tonight, even though when some players are not on the pitch, that they make a difference in this team. Um, and that gives so much energy and so much belief. And we all have this dream where we're still working on. Um, I think our preparation all together with our technical staff and, and medical staff and, and like people that are working on performance, I think that co collaboration has been really well. So we have our plan, but we also look at individuals and where, where needed, we adapt. And then you need a little bit of luck too. You also need a little bit of luck. But I think, yeah, we have done um, pretty well. Thanks very much. We'll go to Adam just behind you. Thank you. Hi, Serena. On Sunday, you're going to be managing in front of a sold-out Wembley in what could possibly be the biggest attendance, men's or women's, ever in a Euros game. How much are you looking forward to that? Yeah, very much. So, yeah, that's unbelievable. So, um, um, yeah, it's very special to be part of that. Thanks, Serena. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adam. We'll go to Amy. Hi, Serena. Hi. Uh, congratulations. Um, these players have never been in this position before to be in a final. Obviously, Sweden started very well. Were you ever worried about how the players might react? And have you been surprised almost by how calm and mentally strong the players have been going through a high-pressure scenario and, and being in, I guess, unknown territory now? Yeah, I think this team has showed it now. this now a couple of times. And um, before the game, so I think the opening game, that was a big one too. And we were all also calm. And yes, we talked about that we had played, should start a little better and play, uh, should have played maybe a little better. But uh, don't underestimate Austria. They were very, we've seen that over the tournament too, that they've done a very good job. Uh, so I, I, I have confidence in this team in, in our players, that, that we stay calm, we stick with the plan, and we have spoken about all the scenarios that could happen, and we also yeah, expect in a game, sometimes things go well, and sometimes things don't go well, but still, then we can count on each other in what we have to do on the pitch and just doing our task, and then hopefully we can come back in the team, and that's what we showed all the time. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. We'll take a final question from Rich. Congratulations, Serena. I know you say you don't look back, you always look ahead, but how proud are you of yourself? Because <laughs> this is your third major final now in five years with two national teams, and I can't think of many head coaches in men's or women's football that have achieved that. Yeah. Well, it's just that I feel, yeah, that it's a little bit incredible, actually, that, that I can be part of that. It's very special. So, of course, I'm proud of myself, but the job's not done yet. We want to go further. Thanks, Serena. Thanks. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, you all. We'll see you in the coming days. Thank you. Thank you.